Welcome to Christ Church of Fort Thomas, Kentucky. My name is Edward Good, and I am pastor of this wonderful congregation here. I'm grateful you are with us wherever you are in your life journey or your faith journey, because our guiding statement as part of the United Church of Christ is that we embrace all as we journey the way of Jesus. So welcome. We're grateful you are with us today. Just wanted to uh, start off with a couple things going on in the life of our church. Starting this month and going through the end of August, we will be collecting uh, jars of peanut butter for Brighton Center. Uh, we have delivered all the dental care things that y'all delivered and sent in over the last couple of months, and we've delivered that to Brighton Center. And uh, so now just jars of peanut butter, crunchy, creamy, whatever you'd like to get. Um, and so, or if you just want to make a donation to Brighton Center for their food ministry, that works as well. So that's uh, what we'll be doing with Brighton Center. Um, we also, in uh, early July, uh, will be doing our next serving at Hosea House. And so uh, there's information on our church website about that and also in emails that we have been sending out. The last thing I wanted to uh, remind you about is that uh, July 21st is going to be the last Sunday for our wonderful music director, Tony Sheffer. Tony is moving into retirement and looking forward to spending more time with grandkids and traveling and, and everything that retirement brings. And so her last Sunday is going to be July 21st. If you would like to make a gift for Tony or like to contribute towards a gift for Tony from the congregation, you can send those to the church office and just note like on a memo line or if you're putting it in online, just send an email to the church saying that that amount is for Tony Sheffer's gift. And so if you'd like to contribute to that, that'd be great. But on the 21st, we'll be celebrating her ministry that she has uh, done over the nearly last 13 years. And uh, then we will be continuing the process of how we will continue with uh, the work that she's done. So that's all ahead. But for now, let's jump into this next series we're going to be doing together in our congregational life that is called Ev What Every Living Thing Needs. And you'll hear what we're going to be doing about that once we jump into the message. So let us pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you for drawing us together wherever we might be. And may your Holy Spirit speak through all that we share in this time and in the ways in which you will use us to be your hands and your feet and your arms of love in the world. As we hear your word now, may your Holy Spirit speak through these ancient words of this ancient song. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. So our scripture reading is a section of Psalm 104, which is a lengthy psalm. And I encourage you to read the whole thing on your own. But we're going to be looking at one part of this psalm that really centers in on the natural world that God has created all around us and that we are ourselves a part of. And so we're going to be looking at different parts of it over the next couple of weeks. And we're starting today um, with, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 10 which says, God, you make springs gush forth in the valleys, and they flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal, and the wild donkeys quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation, and they sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains, and the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle, and plants for people to cultivate, to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the field are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that God planted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a lot right now. There is a lot out there right now that is doing its very best, whether you talk about politicians, media, pundits, whatever you want to do, that are trying to focus on the ways that we are divided and are dividing ourselves. So if we decided, you know, on a Sunday morning that we were going to say, okay, everybody here who's in the sanctuary, go over to this side if you feel this way about abortion. Go to this side if you feel the other way. Or go to this side if you feel this way about full inclusion and rights for LGBTQ individuals. Or go to this side if you feel differently. 
or go to this side if you're going to vote for this political party or this side if you're going to vote for the other one, right? We could do that. I don't know how well that would go in terms of congregational connection and unity. But if we asked something else, though, instead of questions about what divides us, what if I asked some really just basic questions of what do we hold in common together? So let's say, okay, rather than moving around, raise your hand if you took a breath today. Now, if you said no to that, we might need to be calling 911 or something, right? Because we've all taken a breath. I literally just took one right after I said that. Or what if I ask this? Have you used water in any way today? Whether it was a cup of water when you first got up in the morning, or you brushed your teeth, or took a shower, or flushed the toilet, made your coffee, had some juice, whatever it might have been. Have you used water today? Chances are, yes, you have. Have you eaten anything today? Now, depending on when you're taking in, listening to this, or watching this, you might not have eaten anything today. It's possible. But my guess is probably within the last 12 hours, 14 hours, something like that, you've probably eaten something. These are things that all of us hold in common as human beings. And not only us as human beings, but those things are things that are shared by every living thing because every living thing needs air. Every living thing needs water. Every living thing needs food. And a couple other things we're going to look at in the coming weeks. Every living thing needs shelter, and every living thing needs community. But today, we're going to start with two of those things. Do what I mentioned. Water and food. And part of that is because in our in-person service on Sunday, we're going to be doing something in the service that involves both water and then something that involves food. You see, in our service on Sunday, we're going to be baptizing a little boy named Mateo. And then later on in the service, we're going to be sharing what we refer to as the Lord's Supper or communion, or as some refer to it as the Eucharist. And the thing about those things, about baptism and about the Lord's Supper, is that I love the fact that what Jesus used when he told people to go into all the world and baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and when he was at that Last Supper and took the bread and took the wine and shared it with his followers and then said, do this in remembrance of me, Jesus was taking and using ordinary things. So when we do the baptism on Sunday, the water that we will use is ordinary water. It's water that I literally filled this pitcher up from the faucet in our parlor through that door there. It's ordinary water. It isn't water that was flown over here from the Jordan River. It isn't water that came from a special tap. It isn't water that had a special, unique blessing on it, and that's all that it can be used for. This is ordinary water. Nothing more. And yet God uses this water for an extraordinary purpose, to bless this little boy, to put God's mark upon this little child. And to proclaim the forgive the gift of God's forgiveness that is gift for all people. Ordinary water, nothing more. And then later on in the service, we're going to take bread. And the bread that I have here, this is just a, a piece of non bread. The package that was $3.99 at Kroger. There's nothing fancy about this bread. Just as at the Passover meal, there was nothing fancy about the bread that Jesus used. Yes, it was special bread. It was unleavened bread that was for the purpose of telling part of the story of the Passover. But you know what? It wasn't bread 
that was all that much different from bread that was eaten at other times of the year. But at that meal, it was being used for a special purpose. And Jesus did the same thing. He took that bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Share this, remembering me. And in that same meal, Jesus took the wine that was there. And he gave it for all to drink and said, this cup is the new cup that's sealed in my blood, that's shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Share this, remembering me. And the wine that was there, that was ordinary wine that they would have been using not only at the Passover, but it would have been used at other times during the year. Ordinary things that God used for an extraordinary purpose. And, and ours, just like I said, three ninety nine dollars non-bread at Kroger. Bottle of Kroger grape juice that I just poured into this cup. And yet God uses these ordinary things for an extraordinary purpose. God uses these things to give us a taste, an experience, a reminder of the forgiveness and mercy and love of what God is still doing. And so that's the, when we, we talk about this, it reminds us that these things, these ordinary things that every living thing needs, every living thing needs water, every living thing needs food, every living thing needs drink. And God uses those things to accomplish God's purpose. Now, you might be able to see the next step where we're going with that, which is that if God can use ordinary water and ordinary bread and ordinary juice to do something miraculous and wonderful, guess what? God can use you. God can use you. Ordinary person, you are. But in God's eyes, you are extraordinary. And God can use you to accomplish great things. Now, we look at things going on in the world, right? Look at the climate crisis that's going on. We look at the divisions that are there in the world. We look at all of that and say, this is too big. Mm -mm. God took ordinary followers of Jesus, men and women from that early time, and he used them to change the world. And God can do the same for you, with you, and through you. Because it's not about our power. It's about God's working through us. There's one more thing I want to share about this. And that is, I want to encourage you. To every time you encounter water, not just today, but tomorrow and every day. When you have that drink of water in the morning, or when you get caught out in a rainstorm, or when you take a shower, or when you drink your coffee, and you think about the water that's a part of all of that, let that be a reminder to you of your own baptism. Whether you remember it or not, to know that that water that was poured over you or sprinkled over you or whether you were dunked in a river, that that blessing is still upon you. That mark of God's love and forgiveness is still there upon your head. And it will never go away. It can never be lost. And so let each experience of water be a reminder to you of your own baptism. And maybe even a prayer for others as the rain is falling on other people in that grocery store parking lot to pray for God's mercy and grace to come upon them. And that every time you sit down for a meal, even if it's just some bread, you're having a piece of toast with some butter on it, or you're making a sandwich, or just any meal that you eat, think about that as a sacrament. Think about that of God nourishing you and about how we can be a part of God nourishing the world. These are ordinary things. And they can be ordinary reminders every single day for us of who God is, 
what God has done and what God continues to want to do for every living thing. Grace, peace, love, and joy be with you today and every day. Amen.